Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Pure Nintendo podcast. My name is Gemma, and this week I have two of Pure Nintendo's finest. I have Trev. Welcome back, Trev. Ahoy, uh, hoy. Ahoy, hoy. I love that. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Trying to do Mr. Burns. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> got to work on it. I, I, I do that. I do that uh, with my sister. She and I do that to each other. Like, literally, in text messages, we'll write ahoy, hoy. We just... <laughs> We got stuck on that ever since the 90s. Uh, and I also have Kirk. Welcome back, Kirk. I think, yeah, thank you. I, I have no Simpsons um, impressions I can do. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. We'll uh, we'll let it slide this one time. Um, but thank you both for joining us. I feel like we seat. should devote part of the podcast to, uh, you know, maybe picking out a voice for Kirk to practice on. <laughs> we could. For, yeah. for next week. I, don't I, know. I, well, I used to be able to do Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes. Um, and what happened to that? <laughs> but we'll, uh, I just haven't done it in a while. Let me work on it and then we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try it out next week. Maybe. Okay. That's cool. I mean, speaking of voices, this is kind of going to be the theme of today's show, I think, because there was the big news during the week uh, that the voice of Mario is stepping down. So um, that was a really good <laughs> introduction slash segue into the news of the week. So we did hear that, uh, I think it was, well, I heard by Twitter or X. I refuse to call it X. I'm sorry, but Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Charles Martinet is, uh, is no longer going to be the voice of Mario, um, which was announced by Nintendo, I guess, and by Charles himself. And at first, I suppose, I thought... That sounds like a bad thing, as in, well, it does. It, it means the loss of his voice for, for Mario. But you know, when you hear about voice actors, it's it's always there's a little bit of controversy sometimes <laughs> around. You know, like I'm thinking Bayonetta, I guess uh, someone wasn't hired for the job and they were disgruntled, whatever. But it sounds like this was a mutual kind of deal. Maybe he's retiring or he wants to move on or something like that. I don't know. Um, what do we think about this? I have thoughts, but who wants to? Give theirs maybe first. Trev, what do you think about this whole situation? I mean, yeah, it was, um, you know, it's always, it's always sad. I think when there's a, an actor you enjoy is, you know, retiring or, or stepping, you know, away from the industry. But I try to be, I try to look at it just practically. I mean, he's pushing, Charles Barnet's pushing 70. So, you know, that, that's retirement age. He's earned it. I don't know how taxing, you know, the voices, the older you get. But I look at, going back to Simpsons, like look at, you know, Marge Simpson's voice actress. She's only a few years older than Charles Martinet. And you could definitely see, like, hear the decline in later seasons. So mm. maybe the guy just wants to, to rest mm. his vocal cords. He's earned it. I mean, he's been doing Mario since, what, the, the early mid-90s? So... Yeah, yeah. He's earned it after 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a long time. And he does more than just Mario, doesn't he? He actually does. Yeah, I was looking through his IMDb. He's actually done you know, like non-voice acting. He's He's been in traditional TV shows and movies too, more so early in his career. Um, right. But is yeah, one of his an first example? Nintendo... Like a... Oh, I'm sorry, Gemma. Oh, is there a good example that you could pull out for us? off the top for of <laughs> traditional acting yeah i didn't know he did that to be honest yeah, i always just was... thought of him as a voice actor what he was deadpool oh no i'm sorry it's the deadpool it's a movie from 1988 with a uh, clint eastwood and uh -huh. uh, liam neeson different ones but yeah he's done like tv work too it looks like he's got entries here for uh you know like matlock and uh yeah different tv TV shows, some some movies. I'm trying to see if there's anything I know. Uh, yeah. Well, things I recognize. Nine months. I think that's Hugh Grant. Oh, yeah. 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 So he's done quite a few things. And Matt Lock, I mean. That's a movie. <laughs> just, I yeah. Matt Lock just reminds me of The Simpsons anyway. So <laughs> Because, you know, Grandpa is always talking yeah. about Matt Lock, Or at least he was in the early episodes. And he's, he's got over 200 credits, though, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of it obviously is with Nintendo. But mm -hmm. yeah, even even one of his early early credits actually it wasn't a Mario game, it was Super Punch Out on the uh, Super Nintendo. That's one of his early vocal really? credits with Nintendo, so 
cool. He's gone around. Yeah, and even with uh, in, within the Mario franchise, he's also Luigi and Wario, and while Luigi, I'm guessing he's like a whole bunch of Mario related characters, right? He's not just Mario. Yeah, he's done. He's done Bowser and. You do Bowser as well. <laughs> yeah, well, at least early. And oh wow, yeah. he was a voice of Skies of Arcadia. That was a great game on uh, Dreamcast wow. and GameCube. Interesting. Yeah, see, so you shouldn't have got me going to the IMDb because this is like the rabbit hole now. I'm just going to be flipping yeah. through this the whole episode. But <laughs> yeah, 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 that's okay. Give us some little tidbits as you find them. Um, what do you think, Kurt? Do you have any thoughts on? this i mean what do we know about what he's doing next do we know anything because i think he's not and this is what i was alluding to earlier he's not departing ways with nintendo he's taking on some kind of new role right or he's stepping down into a less active role of some sort well they said he was going to be like a mario or a nintendo ambassador right Mm. which uh, Mm -hmm. probably just means that at big events he'll show up for autographing sessions and 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 to talk um I'm, i'm guessing um but yeah, I, yeah. you know, you, you guys know, I don't have the strong emotional attachment to the Mario games that a lot of Nintendo fans justifiably do. Um, so like, my first thought when it happened was, I really hope they're not replacing him with AI. <laughs> <laughs> Which Is that I, the I, nickname I'm, for Chris Pratt now? We're calling him AI? <laughs> <laughs> well, then my second thought was, I hope they're not replacing him with Chris Pratt. Uh, the, 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 I can't imagine there's any way that would happen. Chris um, is is still kind of in demand, and you know he's he's got a lot more to do than than voice Mario in in games. You know, outside of like the big budget movies. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, good for Charles, and he did a fantastic job. But I also and uh, might get in trouble for this. I don't know that that voice is that hard to imitate or to emulate. I should say. So whoever they True. get to do it, I think Ooh. a lot of people, um, yeah, it, it, at least you, you, you'll, you'll probably recognize a little bit of a difference, but get used to it very quickly. Kirk, now we're going to have to hear you imitate that. Forget Marvin yeah. the Martian. Well, I, I didn't Mario. say I could. I'm saying the trained voice acting professionals <laughs> might be able to might be able to do it. Uh, not not yeah. not former English majors. Yeah. <laughs> It's like when uh, I think it's like Puss in Boots or something, which is Antonio Banderas in the movies, but then they make a TV show on Netflix and it's not Antonio Banderas. It sounds similar, right? Like obviously they're trying to emulate Antonio's version of Puss in Boots, but it's slightly different and you're like, hmm, slightly different. So it does bring me to a question I have for you also about Mario, which is Super Mario Brothers Wonder is coming out in October. And when this news of Charles uh, leaving... Um, the voice of Mario came, I thought, well, I mean, A, it would have been nice if he could have left with one more game under his belt, but that's fine. I think it would have been nicer to retire after that game came out. Anyway, I can't see that game listed on his, well, at least on Wikipedia. Maybe Trev can double check IMDb. But the trailer, I double checked. It does have Mario's voice in it. Like he does do his little woohoo and it's a me or whatever. Or some, something like that. He does little Mario noises. And yeah. when I first saw the trailer, when it dropped, I didn't think it wasn't Charles. And so then when I rewatched it, I'm like, like you just said, Kirk, it, it sounds like him. So I feel like the new voice actor is just going to emulate that, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe the recycling things he already recorded. Maybe. Yeah, that maybe. was my thought. They might be using like archival footage, not footage, archival, you know, recordings or... Um, cause I was, I was kind of dissecting the trailer cause yeah, there's no, uh, we, we don't actually know, or at least I don't know as of the date of this recording, who's, who's doing the voices. There's no, uh, you know, listing that I'm aware of. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we'll either be surprised or it'll be, you know, like Kirk said, just previously mm-hmm. use material. I imagine they must have a wealth of material or outtakes that over just over the decades that they've, mm-hmm. you know, probably you know, keeping on file. So, yeah. Did they address I that? Mean, Didn't they say something like he wasn't he he's he wasn't used for the new game? I thought they did. Yeah, but yeah. we don't know who who is being used. So no, they said it's uh, it'll be in the game's credits. So kind of wait wait and see kind of thing, right? Yeah. I think that's what they said. Yeah, because like we know about some of the others, like you know, like Bowser and Peach, but yeah, we don't know Mario or 
Luigi or mm. I guess you gotta beat the game when it comes yeah. out. And... <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the big bonus, finding out who who worked on it. <laughs> yeah, or just waiting for somebody else to do it and then finding it on YouTube. And then we'll find out it really was Kirk. No wonder he said it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Wouldn't that be a great story for a pure Nintendo? <laughs> yeah. Is that where we you were well. last weekend, Kirk? That's right. Were you recording? Yeah, there was no Konami event. I made the whole thing up. <laughs> you covered it very uh, well. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very thorough. You know, if, if not, I, I was I was suspicious. I mean, who ever heard of what was it? Super Rhythm Crazy Super Crazy uh, Rhythm Castle? Yeah, yeah. I had to come up with that quickly. Not my best work. <laughs> You're just looking around for inspiration. And of course it starts with super, right? It's super, I, you know, I've got rhythm and there's a castle in the background. It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I'm slightly disappointed only because I think it would have been nice for, like I said, for him to have one more, one, one big game, especially Mario Wonder being such a different style, I suppose, to previous iterations, but maybe it's also, you could look at it as a good opportunity to give Mario a fresh voice because it is a different version of Mario, I suppose, in a new uh, platforming style, just from the trailer anyway. Hopefully we find out more about that game soon. We're, we're counting on a Direct in September. Is that right? We're hoping <laughs> there'll be a Nintendo Direct yeah, sometime in the rumors. next month. I'm yeah. always hoping yeah. for a Direct. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much all the time. <laughs> mm, yes. We'll take them when they when they come. Uh. Even though I would have preferred, like you, Gemma, t for him to mm. have a game to go out on. I mean, going out as the voice of Mario in the Mario movie, you know, which made over a billion dollars. I think that's a that's a strong way to go out. Mm. Yeah. So you saying dead. he sh should have been Mario in the Mario movie? No, no, no. I'm saying no. that for for his final credit as Mario, if it's oh. indeed his final credit, that's a strong thing to go out on with a billion dollar you know box office hit yeah true but he, know, wasn't even though he wasn't mario but he was mario's dad kind of maybe passing the torch to the you oh, know was he was he mario's dad i didn't even know that he was yeah yep. oh that's cool i knew he was like that oh, little arcade guy the, uh, the arcade dude there yeah i did yes yeah i think he i think he did both <laughs> oh that's cool oh, that's nice yeah i like that that does now you gotta rewatch the movie I do. With your yeah. kids. <laughs> oh, we have we 4K have... now. Come on over and watch. See it almost you get the it? glorious color. Oh, yeah, but we haven't nice. watched it yet. Max, my, my, my youngest got it for his birthday. And, yeah. uh, and we haven't popped it in. Maybe tonight. Yeah. I'd be nice. curious what you think of it compared to the 3D. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the 4D. Uh, whatever. What did you say? <laughs> 4D. What did you call it? 4K. 4K. 4K sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it looks brilliant. Yeah. You'd have to have a nice, a decent TV, I guess, to go with that as nope, well, yep. right? Yep, we yeah, we do. I have to. I play a lot of video games on it. I need I need those colors and those pure blacks. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think the reception's been fairly well received, right? Just because he is, he is staying on as ambassador, you know, so there's obviously a, a room, there's room for him. It does sound... You know, like it was a mutual decision. Like you said, he's re probably retiring. He's 67 years old. He's done it for a long time. He's going to be still making appearances, hopefully, and seeing fans and stuff like that. And we'll welcome in a new voice and hopefully uh, they are greeted, you know, appropriately and, and given um, and fans give, give him the respect, I suppose, that he will deserve. So I just, uh, you know, there's no need to, to um, lash out at a new voice actor just because Charles is stepping down. So hopefully there's nothing like that happening. I kind of admire yeah. whoever whoever they're going to get. It takes you know courage to step into a mm. role that's so well established with with a single, you know, person. So, yeah. you know, it is easy to be critical, but I always any iconic role, I always kind of admire the bravery, you know, an actor takes by by taking on that challenge. So, mm. yeah, that's a good and point. Wouldn't it I mean, be funny if he comes in with a completely different voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like like he's doing a gruff cigarette smoking mobster kind of character. Well, you got to remember, I mean, in the eighties, who was Mario? Is like Lou Albano. 
Swing your arms from side to side. Do the Mario. That's true. <laughs> That's my demo reel for my audition right there. Yes. You've got the job. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we saw Chris Pratt's, the reaction to Chris Pratt was not positive, one could say. Uh, uh, but that, I suppose that was different because Charles was still available. A lot of people thought it should have been him. Uh, Chris has obviously got some controversy around him anyway um, and didn't sound anything like Mario. He just sounded, you know, in the first trailer, it was like, that just sounds like Chris Pratt. So I think there was Mushroom there a few reasons. Up. Here we come. <laughs> Well, yes. I still think that was done because he, I mean, there was so much dialogue. Mario had an awful lot to say and listening to, to Charles's, you know, exaggerated, joyful mm. outbursts are great in little chunks, but um, mm -hmm. again, am I going to get in trouble for this? Do we want Mario <laughs> to sound like that for an hour and 45 minutes? It would, uh, be... it would have destroyed his vocal cords. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it ended up working well. I think Chris was fine in the end. Um, you yeah, know, that's the by, word. He was fine. Black, it's fine. Yeah, he was fine. <laughs> Didn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and if he comes back for a sequel, I, I will be fine with that too. So, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, sorry, Kirk, did you have something? You sound no, like you're about no, to say that something. was it. I've made enough points about Mario. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for that. I did want to say, listeners, um, I, we just segued so well into that. I didn't say this up front, but uh, thank you to our listeners for joining us each and every week. We really appreciate it. And um, if you are on YouTube, please remember to subscribe so you get this podcast delivered every week on Monday. But let's move on to some games that we're playing. And uh, this segue from here might be a platformer that I'm currently playing since Mario is a platformer. I think everyone knows, listeners, and that I love platformers. So I saw this game come up for review during the week, and it's called Mr. Run and Jump. And uh, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to quickly touch on that, and I just realized we we're going to talk about Konami, but we'll come back to that, Kirk. We'll come back to that. So <laughs> Mr. Run and Jump is a platformer that I – and I wanted to ask you guys because at first I thought this was a classic Atari game that they had – re-released in a new format but i don't think it actually is from what i can read online it's actually a new atari game as in it is an atari 2600 game but it's not originally released in the 80s or whatever 90s it's a fan-made thing that you can you can buy physically for the 2600 has anyone heard of this the the console you're talking about the new 2600 plus is that what it is? Because I'm not. I don't know much about Atari, so I don't know the deal. Is the Atari 2600 not the old Atari? Yeah, I, I I think I saw a bit of it because I was angry that that's not what Intellivision did with their Amico that they were trying to push and has now faded into the ether. Yeah, it looks like it's it's a physical unit of a of an Atari 2600. It comes with like old the old style controllers, and but it's got and it uses actual physical cartridges. But the big benefit there, you can buy, um, from what I saw, there were cartridges that'll hold like 10 games. Like you can buy these new cartridges with 10 games on it, but it also will play your old Atari 2600 cartridges if you have nice. them. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that is really cool. I, I agree. And so I thought this was like an old game like those, but no, it's a new game that they've that you can also play on that system. Um, yeah, so at the very beginning when you play the, 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 the Nintendo Switch version, it plays like the old, like like an Atari game. Like it's all not black and white, but very simple pixelated graphics, right? And you kind of run and jump. So it's a platformer, obviously, run and jump. It's developed, Gemma. Um, Atari, obviously, handling the, uh, the publishing or whatever, but it's developed by the guys at Graphite Lab, which did you review that uh, com was it combinera it was mm -hmm. kind of that colorful little puzzler doesn't bring a um, bell we've worked with them before they also did hive jump which i think we had a uh, maybe a developer diary from them in the an old issue that of pnm it does sound i got to look it up now <laughs> it sounds very familiar i did that cabinet oh, it was Mark. ted 
Ted reviewed that game and uh, he gave it an 8.5. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a similar thing. Uh, Atari published Graphite Labs developed. So, uh, yeah, I would encourage anyone to to check them out. I think they're out of um, Missouri. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, Hive Jump was pretty good. I haven't played the their last one on Switch, but Hive Jump was pretty good. Mm, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I was I was impressed with this one. It does play really well. It's one of those platformers that, you know, there's platformers that are accessible to everyone, and then there's platformers that are really challenging. This falls into the challenging category. Mm. And, yeah, it's, it's not going to be for everybody. It's very hard. <laughs> so um, it, it plays really well, though. It's very colourful. It looks really nice. Uh, you can do pretty cool things like you can wall jump, you know, like Mario, you can jump off walls, you can do a high jump, you can do a long jump. So there's a few different move sets available. The controls are a little odd, like you have to press the L, is it LR, I think? No, sorry, the L button. Yeah, the L short button to to duck. And then from there you can jump, you can do your high jump or your long jump. Whereas I don't know why you can't just push down on the D pad to duck. That seems more intuitive to me. Like I keep pressing D down. There's you know, no options things. to remap the uh, controllers. Don't know. I'll check. I've only just played a little. I started this uh, one yesterday, but yeah. I will check. That's before one of my pet peeves with games if they don't let you remap, you know, some controls. Not every game needs it. Yeah. But I always like the option. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's definitely sound options and things like that. I'll check the control options too. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up now because, yeah, we just were talking about Mario and this is a platformer and I do love platformers. So when I see a platformer, it's almost like, yes, I want to give this a go. And I'm, I try to be too critical and compare them to Mario <laughs> too much. But uh, in the end, it's, you know, when you play a whole range and Kirk probably feels this way, maybe with JRPGs, because you play a lot of them, it, you know, it's hard to compare them because some are very different to others. Um but it, it, you still think about, oh, this game did this one better, this one did this one better. Do you know what I mean? When it comes to a particular genre? Oh, sure. Would Definitely. You? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that was just a little segue there. But let's go back to uh, last week. We talked quite extensively about a trip that Kirk took to New York, which was very exciting. And it's a pity you weren't with us, Trev, because we, we had some things to, to ask you and to tell you about. And no, Kirk is- I gotta stop doing every other week. I gotta do two in a row. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. So, but we can give you a bit of a recap. Hopefully, you did listen to the show anyway. But Kirk has now published on our website some really good wrap ups of the games that were played at the Konami event in New York. Uh, and did you want to give us a bit of an update, Kirk, what that's about and any extra info you'd like to share with us? Oh, sure. Sure. Um, well, the three games that I played were Super Bomberman R2, um, uh, a bits, I should, bits of the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, Volume 1. And then, as I mentioned last week, my, my favorite of all the games I played, Super Crazy Rhythm Castle. Um, I, 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 we could probably focus more on Metal Gear Solid at this point um, because... I, I was reading some other coverage of people who were there and they had some different opinions that I did um, expressing some disappointment about, well, this game didn't get remastered or this one's this version and this one's two bare bones. And I thought with all the content that's in here, um, and again, as a guy who's never really played a Metal Gear Solid game before, I thought it was fantastic and there's a whole lot in there. So it just struck me as amusing that... Uh, um, I, I was seeing such different opinions of my own after attending that event and playing it for a bit. But again, there are, what do we say, like seven, eight games included in that. Um, yeah, it's got yeah, Metal heaps. Gear, Metal Gear NES, Famicom version, Snake's Revenge, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, HD collection version, and Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater HD collection version. It's a lot. Um and you know, it uh, is. Some of them are very similar, but you know, if, if you're if you're into this game and you enjoyed these in the past, uh, there's a lot of nostalgia there. And I think if you're new to it, like I was, then there, there's an awful lot to dig into and and find out why uh, why why these games and and Snake himself have, have been so enduring um, for gamers. Mm-hmm. Like Trev, 
Trev has some experience with the series, right? I I do. I I fell away from it uh, probably just after Metal Gear Solid Three, but you know, fortunately for Volume One here, uh, I I've played all these or I've had all these games except for the uh, you know the Famicom version of Metal Gear. And to, to Kirk's point, I think whenever you're dealing with with ports you know, that aren't just full out, you know, remakes that are just like remastered or, you know, whatever. It, it's hard to keep your expectations maybe in check because you either, mm-hmm. you know, you want, it's easy to nitpick, right? You see like, oh, these are just upscaled graphics. They're dated or, you know, but by the same token, you know, looking over these games, you know, if you're a Switch player, are these easily accessible to you? I think a lot of the, I don't want to say casual players, because I don't really like that terminology, but those who aren't in the industry, if you're just a gamer looking to play Metal Gear in handheld mode, I think they're going to be happy to have these games all accessible. And, you know, particularly, I mean, there's some cool ones in here, like the Famicom version I haven't played. VR Missions, I don't know how many played that. I don't think that was a super popular game compared to the original. And, you know, all these games, at least the first two Metal Gear games, when they came out, they were like Game of the Year contenders. I remember Metal Gear going up against Ocarina of Time back in 98. And it was wow. it was closer than you might remember. So, um, yeah. and of course, I'll be interested in playing, you know, the NES games because, uh, you know, even though I have Metal Gear on cartridge, it's just so much easier to, to play it and, you know. Make, make a save state or rewind or whatever type of features they end up including. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited. The more I've been reading about, you know, I, I read some of the negative ones too, like Kirk, but I think Kirk's right up is, is the one I recommend. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <obviously>. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so go check it out right now <laughs> on their website. Um, yeah. Really good points. Thank you, Trev. Excuse me. I think, I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not a huge Metal Gear, not not that I'm not a fan, I just haven't been exposed to it a lot, like I said last week. I think I played one, I don't, I don't even know which one it was. Was it one on the DS or the 3DS or something, maybe? That yeah, I might have played? Yeah. Snake Eater 3D, I think, right? Yeah, it might have. I don't know how I would have got that one. But <laughs> I remember playing it at one on, the, on one of those devices. Um, yeah, and I just, and you know, I said this a lot as well, but I love a collection that actually feels like a proper collection. Like a, this is a proper collection. Like it's got, a, like you said, Kirk, it's got seven or eight games. It's a bunch of content for fans. It feels like it's been well put together, well thought out and yep. of good value, I guess as well, you could say, because it is a robust mm. collection. Yep. So, and and yeah. it has items like the, the visual graphic novels. It, mm. It's got mm-hmm. um, kind of like guides maps and stuff to help you through it it has uh, the soundtrack for one of them one of the games has a full soundtrack included so yeah there, there there's an awful lot so, there. trev loves the soundtrack that might be up your alley trev i do and and the graphic novel for that matter i used to own um mm-hmm. on, back when i had a working playstation portable they had a, a metal gear a visual no- uh, graphic novel i i think it was just one of them but that was pretty cool too, because it wasn't—it wasn't just like you're flipping pages. You could kind of like pan and scan and, and like zoom in, if I remember right. It was a little more interactive. So, yeah, um, that's cool. One thing I really yeah. like about these games too, I just want because these are, you know, these are mature games, and I, I typically don't gravitate toward. In fact, I, I definitely don't gravitate towards M-rated games. But one of the things I always liked about the Metal Gear games is. There's a lot of ways you can play. In fact, if you go out guns blazing, you're, you're probably going to get a game over sooner than later. But these are the type of games that really reward almost almost being passive because, you know, you want to focus on stealth and sneaking around and hiding in the shadows. So I really appreciate that. I used to challenge myself, okay, with the exception of like the boss characters here, can I get through like these missions without any casualties? So I think that's a good option maybe for people who might be turned off by these games yeah that's a good point as well definitely i'm, I'm like you i don't really love those kind of more violent games so 
uh, to have to, to make this one less about yeah the kills, I guess, and more about the stealth is is a is a nice departure, I suppose, from some other titles that might not appeal to people. Anyway, will you be picking it up? Do you think, Trev? Is it something you're interested in? Um, I, I don't think I'm going to at launch, but uh, I, I think I I probably will. I'm definitely curious to check out the Famicom version in particular because I've mm. never played that. That's the only one I haven't played. And uh, Snake's Revenge, for that matter, I, I don't have that. I used to own that as a kid, so mm. I'd be curious how the uh, the nostalgia holds up, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of those yeah. NES games age really well, and then some are like, wow, what was I thinking? So yeah. Uh, either way, I think it'll be fun to revisit. <laughs> And what do you think? I want to circle like, back real quickly to yeah. <laughs> something you said about the game. Uh, you, you mentioned, Trevor, that it's that's more mature. I thought where you were going with that was the warning um, that I, I've seen across the internet and saw when I was playing at the beginning. There's a little text message saying that oh. uh, some of the content in this game may now be, as, as they put it, quote, may be considered outdated, unquote. <laughs> but But they left it in. And I thought that w- was kind of appropriate for this, I should say. Um, I, first of all, there's no maybe about it, as I pointed out in my article. The way these characters are portrayed and the way they act at certain times is outdated. I mean, not for the characters. The characters are who they are, but I don't think they would be portrayed that way if they were this way. Um, and again, I didn't play a lot, so I don't know exactly what they were talking about. But early on in the game... Uh, Snake is doing a lot of flirting um, with with the female characters in the game and hitting on them remotely, and they're just totally into it. They think it's great. Yeah, maybe we'll go out after you get back from your mission, kind of thing. Um, so right. it's it's not terribly offensive, but 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 outdated. Um, but I I think that considering the type of player mostly is going to play a Metal Gear Solid game would probably be more offended if they cut that. Because gamers do not like any content being remo- or removed from games. I won't say censored because it's not censorship. It's just editing for content. That's a completely different thing. Um, but Metal Gear Solid fans who like Snake and all his bravado and machismo will be happy to know that he's still there fully and very well acted. Um, in the later games that have voice acting, I was really impressed with all the characters, no matter how minor, um, with how good the voice acting was. And I think that helps too. Nice. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. You get, I mean, you're looking at the, I, I guess the public consensus from 20, 30 years ago is different from, from how it is nowadays. And yeah, do you do you change the game to change the times, or you know, do you leave it as is? And yeah, it's there's a lot of things. I mean, even interactions with some of the enemies. Like I talked about how I prefer stealth or knocking out. But like you can point a gun at somebody's head and watch them soil themselves and then, you know, you know, kill them. So that's one way to play. I mean, that's certainly not how I play. It's not my preference. But, you know, when people see choices like that, you know, are they going to get take offense? Like, oh, that's torture, you know, and and not saying that's that's wrong to feel that way. But, yeah, what do you do? At, At what point does, you know, a remaster turn into something entirely new like metal gear 1.5 or something it's yeah you know it's, it's a balancing act well what's the latest metal gear solid title like what year did the, the latest one come out and is it is it quite different to those of the 80s and 90s or is it still no idea the last one i played was metal gear solid 3 on the and that was back in 2004 on the ps2 oh yeah so I, I haven't played it in 20 years <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's um, why volume one is for me and, and volume two, maybe not so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do wonder what volume two will encompass. Like what would be, what would be captured in the second volume when that might even be a thing. It might be a long way off. I don't know. They didn't hint at anything, Kirk, at the event, I guess. They're, they're pretty much trying to promote volume one at this point, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, they didn't talk about an X package. Um, and I'm not even sure if looking at the, like I did a quick search here to see what the latest one is. And the one that I can find is Metal Gear Solid 5, um, which came out in 2015. 
And I'm willing to bet that if they were to do another package that has, um, you know, those games, Metal Gear Solid 4 or 5 and whatever else may come after, um, would they even be compatible with the Switch? Oh, um, fair point. Fair point. Yeah, good question. Not sure. I Yeah, I assume it'll be a while away. Yeah. And maybe it depends on sales. It'd be weird to have Volume 1 and then not follow up <laughs> with something else, but... Hey, if it doesn't do well, they're not going to waste time on it. But maybe they're already working on it. I don't know. Who knows? But do we know what's actually on the cart versus like what will be a download? Did they address that? I believe all of it's on the cart for volume one. At least it seemed to be. And, you know, it's possible they already downloaded it onto the system and I just didn't know. Um, But, you know, when I was loading up the game, everything was right there and accessible from the start. Good, good, good. Yeah, well... Thank you, Kirk. And if you, yeah, if readers or sorry, listeners want to check out more detail about that event uh, and and that game, please head over to PureNintendo.com. Did you want to talk about any of the other games you played on the day, uh, Kirk? Do you want to update us on anything else or happy with? Um, well, I can say that we do have one more article coming um, for Super mm-hmm. Crazy Rhythm Castle. Um, I interviewed mm-hmm. the uh, brand manager, a, a fellow named Christian, about that game, and that article has not been posted yet. It's coming very soon okay. at Pure Nintendo. So if you have read my my write up of the wonderful Super Crazy Rhythm Castle, um, come back soon, and and we'll have a little more content on that. Um, Brilliant. Which sadly, there still is no release date for that game, so I don't know how long we'll be waiting for it. But really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, it does sound good, and yeah, I think it's just like a 2023 kind of window, right? Like we expect to yeah. see it this year. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. That's cool. Um, did you ask him that question, Christian? Did he not give you any more details? <laughs> I did not okay. ask him that. Um, oh, okay. we, we talked about characters, his favorite character, the music, um, mm-hmm. uh, like last week when we talked about the debate between licensed music and original music for a rhythm mm-hmm. game. Um, mm-hmm. so we talked about that, the colors, um, uh, just mainly focused on the gameplay and strategies. I got, some, I got some good tips. Yeah. Nice. Sounds like it wasn't as difficult as a space channel five there, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I could reiterate that. There's a, No, uh, it wasn't as difficult for me. Um, when you mm. start the game, there's, there's a regular uh, level, then there's pro. And if you start at regular and the game feels that you're doing too well, it will bump you up. And after the first level, I completed it at 99% accuracy. Um, so it bumped me from regular to pro. And all that does, from what I could see, is it adds a fourth button. So instead of hitting R, L, and Y, I'm now hitting R, L, Y, and the left D pad button. And just adding that fourth button in there was enough to knock me back down to like 77%, I believe, on the second level. So um, there is, there yeah. is, it will take some practice, but you can go into the levels. Um, there's what they call a music lab, and you can go in and... Um, just play strictly the rhythm um, battles without having to worry about all the side content uh, that the, mm-hmm. the game um, tosses at you. Yeah, it sounds really fun. So if you get knocked up to or bumped up to uh, pro, you can't change it. So you can't manually you, you go can. back. Yes. Oh, you yeah, you can. Okay. You can switch yeah. back and forth at any time. Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, speaking of rhythm titles, we also mentioned last week Samba de Amigo. And I just wanted to give a quick update on that because I, I told you I would try the demo, Kirk, and I did, right? So promise fulfilled. <laughs> okay, great. I have uh, just a couple of minor points to say about this. And the full game, I think, is is uh, coming out. It'll be out when this podcast launches or the day after. I think it's coming out yeah, on the 29th. Yeah. So um, very, very briefly, I went to get the demo on the Australian eShop, which is like my default because I'm in Australia. It didn't have a demo. It may now, but it didn't last week so i'm like what that's weird so i had to go to the usc shop to get the demo so i don't know if it's only a u.s thing but it wasn't available i do know the u.s version came out first and then they slowly rolled it out for other countries so i'm not sure all of them have it yet yes so maybe it's there now but it definitely wasn't there a week ago uh i the one the demo for whatever reason that i had only had two songs which i think we talked maybe there'd be a few more but there are only there are only two songs so it wasn't a lot which is fine. It's a demo, uh, but there's not a lot of re- replayability in the demo. So it's very, very much just a teaser of the full game. And I played both songs. I tried the two methods of play, which are 
controller or uh, like motion, right? So I made I was feeling lazy. So the first song I did, um, <laughs> I used the controller as like you know the actual con- like buttons. It was not as good. It was really hard actually. So I did really poorly. And then I went. I said, okay. No, I thought to myself, I'm going to try the actual motions. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to stand up and actually do this properly. Like it's meant to be played as if I'm holding maracas. And it was way easier. And I did way better and actually way more fun. So I did enjoy it. Uh, I probably, I don't know if I'd get the full game, but it was really fun. It was fun. I will say that I had a good time with, with my two songs that I had. So Summer de Amigo, uh, worth it, worth the checking out. I'd say if you're into motion games, I think Trevor, you, you a motion person. Do you like emotion games? Um, I, I do. Yeah. I think I like them maybe yeah. more than you might dig it than many. Um, yeah. Specifically with Samba de Amigo though, I, I played it. There was a version on the Wii, mm. and for whatever reason, they with the the Wii and Nunchuck, it was different from how the Dreamcast one was, and I, I had a hard time wrapping my head around it. Oh, um, okay. yeah. But you know, it's just I, I'm sure the Switch version is going to be, you know, a lot more yeah. polished. It was really, it's yeah. I mean, very limited time with it, but it was it was pretty good. The controllers were really hard because you have you use your left hand for the let's say the D pad, I think, and you have up, left, and down, and then your other hand is doing, I think, uh, what is it, Y, A, and B or something, right? So the the directions because it's it's up, it, the maracas go up in the air or they go to the side or they go down, and it just, mm. I mean, probably with practice it gets easier, but to coordinate my left and right hands going kind of up left and down right at the same time is is really hard <laughs> with the controller uh to to respond to what's happening on the screen so i don't know for me the motion was easier but i'm glad they give you the option i think that's really neat yeah, yeah. i think the demo is available in besides australia i think it's in uh looks like it's in europe and north america cool yeah, it may just not have been out uh, at the time. Like it was a week ago that I did this, so maybe it just hadn't hit yeah, Australian maybe. eShop yet. But anyway, hopefully it's there now. Can you get a workout from this game? I mean, if you're up playing it a lot and you have a whole bunch of songs, is this like a just dance kind of thing? Or or since you're just waving your arms around, is it a little lighter? It's lighter, I would say. You still have to strike poses, which I mean, I guess you move your whole body. But generally, it's just your arms. You, I guess you kind of get into the rhythm of it. You're probably shaking your hips a little bit, right, with the music. But you don't really need to move your legs. So it's probably up to you how into it you want to get. If you're really into it, you probably could jump around and have some fun with it. Um, your arms will get a workout. Yeah. So. It'll be like Homer when he took up arm wrestling. You'll have a <laughs> <Yeah>. beefy arms. <laughs> You'll keep, yeah, keep your gut, but you'll be, have beefy arms. <laughs> yeah. Does he say, like, now it's lefty's turn? And then uh, he never <laughs> oh, gets that's to right. do He just had the one dumbbell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He gets really pumped on the one side, and then he hustles people. <laughs> Arm wrestling <laughs> tournaments. Anyway. I, um, I can see Kirk rolling his eyes. Not really. We don't have video on, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can hear it. feel it. <laughs> we can feel it. We can feel it through the through the airwaves. Uh, okay. Those two and their Simpsons references, I'll tell you. Um, the other game that I've been playing, well, a few other games, and, and you know, tell me if you guys have any input into these because I've got a few this week. Because uh, you know, Kirk and I have been busy with the Konami write ups and stuff. But I I mentioned Vampire Survivors, and again, I, I don't want to spend too much time on a game I've already talked about. But I'm really enjoying this game, and I wanted to give an update because last week. Two things. Uh, last week I said I didn't know if you could play handheld mode without the touchscreen, and you can. You can play with the controls in handheld mode, so that's really good. The other thing I wanted to say is that it has multiplayer, which I didn't realize when I started playing it last week. And so I've been playing with my kids quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's it's so fun. Like I just Sorry, which I don't game know is why. This? this is Vampire Survivors. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's uh, I guess it's a bullet hell i don't know what you describe it as it's hordes of enemies are coming towards you continuously and the aim is to survive as long as possible and kill as many as possible and collect as much uh i guess coins and gems as possible and 
what I love about this game that I also didn't mention last week is that you, so I, I, I was thinking I played it a couple of times before the show last week. And then I thought, I don't know how I'm going to keep playing because I got to a point where it was just too hard. Like there's just too many enemies. They take too long to kill. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get past this point, but the coins you collect go towards power-ups that you can purchase uh, in the menu of the game and they add to your strengths or whatever, your health, um, your defense, and make you a more powerful character by, like from the outset. And this is a power-up you keep, so you can use it every time, basically. And you can also get a refund on it if you decide you don't want to use it anymore and you want to swap it for something else. Basically, there's a lot of options in there, which I really, really enjoy. Um, there's a lot of different ways to play. And when you add in a couple of other people and you're there um, trying to survive as long as possible together, like you're working together, it's... I don't know. It just works really well. I really like it. And we've got, uh, I think last week I was saying a game lasts about 10 minutes. We've got to 20 minutes. So the three of us, me, myself and my two kids, we've lasted 20 minutes in this, in this round. Um, and it was just so much fun. You know, all these different enemies, they change. So there are kind of waves. I said there weren't really waves like potato has waves. They're not timed waves. It's just, you start off with a whole lot of bats and then there's a whole lot of skeletal sword wielding enemies. Then there's like ghosts. Then there's like bigger bats. Then there's uh, Medusa kind of things. There's zombies and spirits and all these different <laughs> enemies and they're just swarm and it's, uh, it's hectic, but fun. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend it for sure. <laughs> and but my next review game that I'm playing, apart from Mr. Run and Jump, is something called Two Who. And I, I was hoping you guys might have heard of this because I didn't realize. So this is Two Who. And am I saying this correctly? Two Who? T O U H O U. Sounds right. I, I, yeah. I looked at it as Tao How, but I Tau could Hau. be completely wrong. It, well, it's, you know, it's probably a Japanese word, right? And you mm -hmm. probably know a bit more Japanese than I do. So maybe it's Tao How. I don't know. Could be tell how to you so, who you to <laughs> let's uh, I'm gonna go with tell how because I'm gonna just <laughs> default to Kirk, but LS chat AI, yes, yeah, yes, thank you. <laughs> tell how new world, and I was trying to work out how this fits into this tell how project that's been going on since the mid 90s, which is like another bullet hell kind of series of games, the tell how series, I suppose. And this isn't part of that series. It, it is and it isn't. It's a fan-made game based on that series. So it's the same characters and setting, but this is an action RPG with bullet hell uh, elements, I suppose. Like, you know, you, you go through it. First of all, um, it's really it's really fun. It's really pretty to look at. It's a top-down kind of RPG style of uh, action, and you're kind of a, a, a mage or some sort of magician. Is this another um, bullet hell? Yeah, kind well, kind of. There, it's more like an RPG, an action RPG with bullet hell elements. So, you uh -huh. you walk through different worlds, you collect different things. There's there are enemies to fight, obviously, and that's where the bullet hell comes in. They kind of like bosses, I guess, in particular, fire things at you that feel a bit bullet hell ish. Um, I wouldn't say it's a true bullet hell, but definitely has elements in it. And more like bullet heck. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> But um, for a bit of history, as far as I know, and correct me, Kirk or Trevor, if you know more about this, but the Tao Hao Project is a one-man developer, uh, Junior Ota, who's been developing these bullet hell shoot 'em ups since the mid-90s. I think he's got 19 games under his belt and six spin-offs uh, that have been self-published, I believe. And this is, like I said, a fan-made title based on that series. So it's really interesting from that perspective. Um, and the, the team, whoever has made uh, Tao Hao New World, has done a really good job. It's um, very engaging. It's very fun. There's lots of characters who interact with each other. Um, and the action is really, really spot on. And it's not from so far, at least, it's not too difficult, as in you have different buttons that do different things, like you can, the special powers you can use. They kind of take time to recharge, so you can choose which weapons to use based on who you're fighting you can also uh there's like because you're a magician i suppose you can heal yourself so it, it makes it a lot easier in that you don't really die <laughs> not easily anyway uh you can you can sort of give yourself i think 25 percent of your health back when you use this spell 
of course, if you then uh, hit and <laughs> it takes off more than the 25% that you've given back, then you're going to obviously die. But yeah, it's not meant to be a difficult game, I don't think, at least not in my early stages that I've been playing. But yeah, I just really, really enjoy the the graphical element of it. It looks really, really nice. And I, I do like a bullet hell and I do like an RPG. So the, the com combination is quite fun. So I think it's going to get a good review from me when I when I finish it and write it up. Nice. Yeah. According to uh, Chad AI, it's mm -hmm. toe, like toe on your foot. Mm -hmm. And then the hoe is dragged out a little bit longer. So you say the toe quick. Toe ho. Like that, toe. I guess. <laughs> toe ho. Assuming okay. this is right, I might be triggering Skynet here, but... Uh, yeah, actually, I found a Wikipedia entry, and according to what I'm seeing, both of the O's are held out. So it'd be like Toho, as opposed oh, to like okay. Toho, the production company. Okay. Um, oh. And I, I, I know a little bit about this because back in 2020, I reviewed a Toho. Now that I know how to say it, I'm going to say it a lot. I'm very proud. Yeah, yes. Uh, I... It, reviewed one of the games from the series, except it wasn't a bullet, bullet hell. It was an offshoot. Um, and it mm -hmm. was like a bubble matching game. Oh, I remember that one. Yes. It was, it was called Toho spell bubble. I didn't uh, even sure realize that was the same like franchise. Yep. Huh. I, I, I gave that one a 7.5. Um, it was a little mm -hmm. too expensive. I, I felt for the game, but the gameplay was great. Mm -hmm. and it was colorful and lively and, and it was a lot of fun. Nice. That was who one of the six spin-offs from uh, from Junior, <laughs> I'd say. If he's on 19 games and six spin-offs, that would be one of them. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot that's of cool. content. Yeah, a lot of content over what, like a almost 30 year period. That's yep. that's pretty impressive. And he uh, and you're probably in the same article that I saw, I think. He he's written them, I think he developed them. Like it's all him. It must be some sort of passion project for him i suppose yeah he's done the graphics the writing and the music as well so yeah well, maybe Pretty one cool. day we'll get a master collection of yes. toho project games yeah. volume one and two yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah with a warning about content to set us off <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah so very much enjoying that one look for more of you soon and how are we going for time we're, we're doing all right here um I wanted to also mention Mario Kart Tour, which uh, is a mobile version of Mario Kart that I dip in and out of and lately have been a little bit, I don't want to say obsessed, but I've been, I don't even want to say addicted. Let's just say regular, <laughs> I've been regular with it. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if every that day. sounds better. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Well, what, how would you put it then? It's just I've been checking in every day and, and doing my races. Uh, there's a daily race you do to get to. Um, you don't, you don't want to know how I put it, Gemma. I mean, it's a mobile game, so I'd probably put yeah. it in a addiction. <laughs> yes. Well, I feel like it's good for me. I'm, I'm getting ahead of the game a little bit because, you know, we have the DLC and there's only one more round of DLC, but there's been DLC for Mario Kart yeah. 8 and we've got one more to go. And Mario Kart Tour has just released a new track, which is set in Spain. So we know Mario Kart Tour has these real world settings uh, from time to time, from Los Angeles to Sydney. Uh, there's Bangkok. There's a whole uh, very wide range of them now. And Spain is the latest one that's just been added. And I do wonder if it'll make its way to the Switch, to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, when, it come, when the last round of DLC hits us. And it's a really fun little track. And it, <laughs> the thing that stands out is when you're going through the city, there's a point where you go through a soccer field and there's, uh, are they Goombas? I think they're Goombas in those boots from Mario 3. Uh, what do they call those boots? I can't remember what they're called. You know the ones I mean? They're the, the, the green boots that the Goombas sit in and they jump around. Oh, the, uh, well, I think now they just call it the Goomba shoe, but it, back in the day it was like the Karibo shoe or. Yeah, it had a Japanese like name, I think. It had some some name. Yeah, so they're back. Um, they're giant boots with giant goobers. Anyway, but there's this big giant soccer balls kind of around. You have to dodge them. But you actually can drive into them and, and you get points for, for hitting them. So <laughs> Karibo shoe is what it was called. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 
So it's a fun track. I really like what they do in Mario Kart Tour every, I think, two weeks. They have a new kind of tournament that you can play through and they add a new set of four trucks, I think, every day for a bunch of days during that two-week period. So you don't have to – because if you join at the end of the two-week period, there's like all these open trucks and it's a little overwhelming. But if you're doing it constantly, every day they unlock a new – set of four so you can kind of do it every day if you want to you earn stars you earn prizes you can unlock characters and uh, carts and gliders and stuff like that it's just it's a fun little thing to do um for me (laughs) i'm a big mario kart fan and like i said i feel like i'm just getting ahead of the game by preparing Mm. myself for what's next in the dlc so yeah you gave me an idea Gemma. yeah what's that um well how are we on time but anyway anyway, i'll just say a quick I think it would be fun for a podcast Mm -hmm. if we looked at the carts that are left and if we picked Mm -hmm. like which carts we'd like to see in the last wave, carts that haven't been re-released, tracks that haven't been re-released yet. I think that could be a fun little uh, offshoot of the podcast. Yeah, for sure. That's actually, that's a really good idea because, you know, we've got how many years worth of Mario Kart uh, history to draw upon. What's not yeah. in Mario Kart 8 yet? What's not there? And what would we like to see there? It's a, there's still it's a, a fair game. amount. It seems like what could possibly be left, but there's actually, you know, still a decent number. And I think it'd be fun to speculate. Don't don't cheat. Don't look at any data mining or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I do like that idea. Uh, I'm very happy to consider my tracks that I'd like to see. Um, there can't be many Wii tracks left, though, right? There's probably some GameCube ones, uh, maybe some of the Game Boy. Uh, what was the game? the Game Boy Advance? Was it? Um, oh, Super Circuit, yeah. Super Circuit, yeah. There's probably some from there. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, if you if you look at what you want, I'll look at what I want, and we'll <laughs> we'll come back on it. The hardest thing um, will be narrowing them down. Otherwise, I'll just be listing a couple dozen <laughs> tracks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I wanted uh, Daisy Cruiser, and I got that. That was definitely yeah, one I was looking out for. Right. So, yeah, that came last time. Um, I wanted Coconut Mall, but we have that now as well. Yeah. I, You know what I do want, just off the top of my head? Some more Bowser's Castle. That's missing for me. There's not a lot of Bowser's Castle tracks. You're right. I feel like there's not as many of them compared to. Yeah. They're, and oh. I loved those. Like the one on the Super Nintendo I loved. Uh I used to love that one because I would actually be able to overtake people in that track, like in in the in the Super Mario Kart, the original title. <laughs> I found nothing more satisfying than overtaking people, as in you're not just winning, but you're then overtaking the eighth person and the seventh person. You're you know lapping what I mean? Them. Like, yeah. yeah, you're lapping them. That's it. You catch up to them and you and you overlap them. So <laughs> I found that so satisfying. And I remember, I think it was just Bowser's Castle One or whatever it was called. I think that was one. I found somewhat easy to catch up to at least the eighth person and overtake them. <laughs> I love that. I just love it. You can't really do that now on the Switch, I don't think. it's The, the, the AI is too good. They're not that slow, you know. <laughs> you got to go on 50cc maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They were so predictable. Like you could, I knew where to leave a banana peel because I know that's where they're going to drive, right? So <laughs> I'd slow them down. <laughs> oh, mm. Memories. Yeah. So, um, yes. Well, before we close off, did you want to give us an update on the new issue of the magazine? We just had a meeting about that during the week, didn't we, Trev? We did. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm I'm doing a, a cover story, which I've actually – this is only my second cover story in, like, t- a decade with Pure Nintendo. So, wow. go figure. That's yeah. weird. But, um. <laughs> It's going to be Super Mario Brothers Wonder, which we were mm-hmm. talking about earlier when we were discussing Charles Martinet. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, it got announced a couple months ago. It will be out a couple months from now. And we don't know a whole lot. So I find myself really dissecting the trailer and every press shot. And mm. I feel like one of those, like, YouTubers, like, oh, here's 10 things you missed. And then you watch the video and it's like, what is this? you know nonsense so <laughs> yeah it's a challenge to make a compelling cover story but i'm hard at work on it yeah and uh yeah you were talking about daisy cruiser i think that's your character Gemma. 
yes, I am doing the character profile as I do each issue, and this month will be Daisy, so it's, it's a bit of a Mario theme. We've never done Daisy before, and I do love Daisy. She's my go-to for Mario Kart, Mario Party, that sort of thing, and probably Super Mario Brothers Wonder because she will be playable. Um, so that yeah. will be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, for the first lots time. of good stuff. Kirk's, uh, you know, hands-on stuff from the Konami event is going to be immortalized in print, which is always exciting. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we're talking about speculations on the Switch Pro or Switch Two mm-hmm. or whatever the next hardware is going to be. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, we've been writing that in our heads for years. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's lots, lots to look forward to, um, for sure. Yeah, it's always fun. And, you know, it's a lot of work, work pulling it all together, but it's it's really fun because it's just different to, you know, it's different to the podcast, it's different to reviewing and uh, doing stuff for the website. And, yeah, like you said, immortalizing it in print, it's um, it's kind of special. I like it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely look forward to that. So, yeah, that'll be out. Uh, we're aiming, I think, end of September, early October kind of thing. So, We'll give you guys another update as we get closer to that time. But yes, we're definitely working hard on it right now. And uh, yeah, something special. And especially with Mario Wanda, it'd be good timing because that's out in October. And I'm so excited about that game. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah it'll, be a, anyway. it'll be a big one. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Did you, either of you have any final thoughts or closing comments before we sign off? No, I, I don't think so. Although no. I, I will say one of the games that I'm reviewing right now, <laughs> yeah. I thought you'd get a kick out of this. We're, we're talking about collections and what what, uh-huh. what uh, constitutes a collection. I previously reviewed a game called Tato Milestones, which was 10 games from, from Tato's back catalog. Um, and I'm now taking on Tato Milestones 2, which is coming out uh, later this month. And I'm wondering how easily we're allowed to apply the term milestones to games. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I have never heard of any of these games. Oh, <laughs> Not right. one. So and it's not to say they aren't good, but, oh, you know what? They're Darius. Darius 2 is in here. And, uh, mm-hmm. well, you guys may not even remember. Do you remember a game show, um, maybe in the 80s, called Starcade? No. It was on cable. Well, I I believe they used to they used to play Darius and that that was a game that would come up for the contestants to play and I never saw it in an arcade or at least never played it but uh, I I just thought it was comical that they're they're calling this collection Tato Milestones too when I'm, I'm not really sure they're milestones at this point so much as obscure <laughs> games that you may remember <laughs> from the back of the arcade um, yeah. but as such since I haven't played them I am really looking forward to digging into this. And was was the first collection of milestones? Did that have games in it that you recognized? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. That right. had boy, what was on it? Uh, Kicks was on it, and I loved that game. Wild Western was on it, and I loved that. Um, was it Elevator Action or Crazy Climber? Um, was a game <laughs> that I, fun. I, I <laughs> my brother Matt loved it. He swore by this game, and I just wasn't good at it, so I I, I didn't like it as much as he did. Mm, um, okay. That was <laughs> Elevator Action, yes. Um, and then there were some other games that I hadn't played before but liked a lot, um, so I'm hoping to find more of that here in Tato Milestones, too. Mm-hmm. Is it Tato or is it Taito? Oh, Taito. here we go again. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's Toto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll never know. Uh, uh, you can check your AI bot again, Trip. Um, it sounds like the milestones were all captured in the first collection and the second one is more like B-sides, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so I guess that's the danger of of, of calling your collection milestones because if you're going to release another one, you either got to lose the branding or uh, yeah. or just be a yeah. little optimistic about <laughs> how well-remembered <laughs> these games are. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I look forward to hearing more about that when you're done. <clears throat> thank you very much and thank you, Yeah, thank you both for joining me this week and talking all things Nintendo. Thank you, listeners, for joining us. And uh, as I said earlier, please uh, leave us a review on one of the podcasting platforms or like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you leave us a question on YouTube, we will attempt to answer it in the next episode. So, yeah, love to hear your thoughts. 
And if you do want to get on board with the magazine that we're currently working on, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash pure Nintendo and get on board uh, for the next issue, which, as I said, will be out um, late September, early October. And until next week, thank you and game on, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.